I'm gonna give you guys 10 reasons why you would not want the Tesla Model 3 in your life. Now check this out. What's up guys, Myung here from Camera to Freedom and I love my Tesla Model 3. Don't get me wrong, this is definitely my most expensive car I've ever owned and this is the most favorite car that I've ever owned in my life that I'm actually excited about. But you know, nothing in life is perfect. As much as I love this car, it's still very new. I mean, compared to every other dealers out there, you know, I don't want to talk bad about Tesla for sure because I think they're definitely one of the best companies in the world. Elon Musk trying to save the world one car at a time and take us to Mars and all this cool stuff. So I support him. He's totally awesome. So with that said, I'm going to give you 10 reasons why you might not want a Tesla Model 3 in your life. All right. If you haven't yet, please hit that like button and subscribe. Thank you so much. And also real quickly, if you are interested in this Tesla Model 3 t-shirt, I have the link below. If you buy from that link, I appreciate you and love you so much for it. Thank you. Our reason number one, charge anxiety. So with regular gas cars, you could obviously drive anywhere you want to, gas stations in every exit of the freeway, and it's not gonna give you any problems if you wanna drive from state to state or across country. But with a Tesla Model 3, you get charge anxiety. Tesla did an amazing job putting charge superchargers all over the United States. And if you really want to go from California to New York, you can do it, right? So I saw this funny video of this uh, young girl who was talking about how she was complaining. She was complaining about how she wanted to go green. And so she rented a Tesla from Washington. She came to California and normally she said it would take her, I don't know, maybe 12 hours or so, but it ended up taking her way longer than she expected because she had to stop by every supercharger and of course when you get there you have to wait about you know 30 minutes to get it charged she almost would hit zero percent before finally reaching the next superchargers if you were to go from san diego to las vegas and it normally takes you about three and a half hours you might actually have to stop by a supercharger and extend that for an additional you know 30 minutes and if you have to stop by multiple times, right, it just keeps getting longer, right? So you do have that problem if you decide to drive long distance with your Tesla Model 3. Reason number two, you live in an apartment without any power adapter for your car. So that could be a problem, right? So luckily I live in a house. I have the NEMA 1450 charger that could fill up my uh, battery in just less than a day. And overnight, it'll just reach that certain percentage that I need and I'm ready to go in the morning. But if you live in an apartment and you don't have any parking space, then you are out of luck. Then you have to rely on superchargers. If you don't drive that far, then I guess that's not really a problem, right? I was talking to uh, one person that commented on my video about certain situation. And this person just lived a few miles away from work. And at work, they have their own little EV chargers. So it wasn't a big deal. But if I lived in an apartment and I drive like hundreds of miles a day, I drive so much for my work, I would not be able to survive on not being able to charge at my house. I'll tell you what, the couple of times that I've been to a supercharger, I'm waiting in line for it. And at the same time, the time that I can go is usually at the time that the price is doubled, right? It's at peak hours. So price in Southern California is at 55 cents per kilowatt hour. So it's you know, 30, 30 some dollars to get a full charge if I want to go from zero to 100. So I definitely want to wait till uh, nine o'clock, 9 p.m. to get my charge at the house so that it's, you know, only 22 cents here. And I know like in different places in the United States, it's a lot cheaper. So, so if you live in an apartment and you don't have any power adapter, then it could be a big hassle owning a Tesla Model 3. Reason number three, it takes a long time to get your car fixed. Their repair centers are still very limited. You can't just go to any mechanic and get your car fixed. You have to go to a Tesla certified mechanic or directly to Tesla. I'm in Temecula. Uh, we do have a Tesla de dealer here, but they don't repair cars. I have a friend who recently just got her a Tesla Model Y. Her name's Carrie and she works at our gym. What's up, Carrie? She told me that she got her Tesla Model Y. A week later, she got into a small accident where she hit something on the road and it dented her bumper. So she called Tesla. They gave her two mechanics around town that she can go to. 
they're obviously very busy since they're so they're so limited and there's a lot of teslas in this town so she took it over there and it's been almost two months that she still hasn't gotten her car to me it's worth it if i'll wait however long it takes because you know tesla is doing their best to get their thing situated but at the same time maybe you don't have that kind of patience maybe you're not into waiting months to get a small little thing fixed in your car so that kind of sucks she the bumper itself was actually fixed but she says something about a bracket that kind of holds it in place or something a small little piece that they're waiting from tesla to get so it it sucks it's gonna take a while fixing your tesla is a hassle so don't get into an accident reason number four that you might not like or want the tesla is just the hassle of trying to figure out the charging percentage to be honest with you it's not a big deal i kind of enjoy it always having fun you know if i should charge 50 percent 80 percent 100 percent you know everybody has their theories some theories will make your battery last longer and even improve and some of that percentage theories will deteriorate your battery quick. Tesla themselves don't have an absolute answer. They generally say, hey, 50 to 90% for a long range and performance average and once in a while charge to 100 whenever you need that at 100. But Elon Musk already said that, you know, forget 100%. 100% gets rid of your regenerative braking. So just charge it at 95% so that you could still use that regenerative braking and you're not charging it to 100%, which is bad for this battery. Then, and then I've seen a another YouTuber who always charged at 80%, never used a phone charger, you know, air conditioning, very minimal, and he was able to improve his battery. But you know, to be honest with you, batteries are so different. I've, you know, I'm a videographer, a photographer, and I have many, many batteries for all my gears, right? And they are all different. I could buy 10 batteries for this camera and each of them are very different. Sometimes they'll last longer. Some of them will die quicker. And you know, there's a lot of variation. It's one, they're not that consistent. So I think it's similar with our Tesla cars. I think sometimes it's, it might be better at a certain percentage, but you know, you never know with these batteries, right? They're not consistent enough for us to be a hundred percent sure about your percentage. So I think from just, personal experience that you have to feel your car I, I could feel it right like when i for example i charge it to 50 percent as much as i can uh 80 when i'm driving around a lot and once in a while i will charge to 100 so just so that i know if it's giving me the full 100 percent mileage that it's supposed to so i think that tesla model 3 long range you're supposed to get about 350 miles on a full charge but i've had days where I would get 360 miles, an extra 10 miles. And sometimes it'll be 255 and sometimes 250. So I could kind of feel, you know, if the kind of abuse or love that I'm giving my battery and it's totally up to you to figure that out too. When you love your little toy, you want to take good care of it. You start thinking about it and wondering how you can take care of it. And maybe you're not into that and you just want to go to a gas station and just fill it up and just ready to go. Reason number five why you might not like the Tesla is that it has no spare tire. It, your Tesla doesn't come with a spare tire. They want to try to make it as light as possible so you get the most mileage as possible. Obviously, if you put a lot of weight in your car, then you get less miles, right? So maybe they're just trying to save money because obviously they're probably saving millions and millions of dollars by not giving people spare tires and making profit because you know when you do get a spare tire you kind of have to call tesla uh, road service to get a change so it's a big profit just simply by not giving us spare tires amazon sells spare tire made specifically for a tesla model 3 for about 300 bucks i'll put a link uh, of that below and if it bothers you to drive around without a spare tire then you could buy one and just leave it in your trunk but that'll take up space because it's not going to fit on the bottom of that trunk like i'll normal cars would have on the bottom of that trunk a spare tire in my town uh, in temecula there's a lot of long roads like here to julian to you know irvine there's a lot of long roads where i don't even get phone receptions and there's no gas station for a long time and i feel like if i was to get 
flat tire at that place, then I am absolutely screwed. I have seen some stuff on Amazon where you could fix a flat, put some slime in there or something like that. I've never done it before. I might have to jump the gun and just figure out how to fix my own tire in case that ever happens to me. Because I mean, with my regular cars, I have gotten flat tires many times in my life. So, but it's so easy to change your tire and just move on, right? So it's not a stress, but with a Tesla Model 3, it can be stressful. So you better make sure that your tire is just, you know, top shape all the time. Reason number six why you might not want a Tesla Model 3 is that you can't modify your car. It's you, you lose that car culture. I've owned Hondas and of course, you know, the movie Fast and the Furious. I mean, just having a cool car where you could soup it up and get intakes and shocks and do all this cool stuff. I really haven't done anything crazy with my Hondas in the past. Just, you know, I, I own a handful of Hondas and I love the car. It's so stereotypical for an Asian guy with a dragon tattoo to own a, um, you know, Honda. But hey, man, that's what we love. So anyways, Tesla doesn't have a racing culture. It's not fair, right? I see so many videos like Tesla Model 3 performance and Tesla Model S racing against Lamborghinis and Mustangs and all those super fast cars. And of course, Tesla just beats the hell out of them. And it's so not fair. It's, it's an electric car. It's obviously super fast. It's kind of like a bullet train racing a steam engine locomotive, right? So it's crazy. So it's not even a fair race. So you can't really modify your car. If you were to do some kind of modification to your car, then you lose your warranty, right? So you don't really want to uh, modify. And as of now, I don't really know what you could really do to your car to make it faster because it's already so fast. And with this long range, if you want to make it faster, you could actually just buy a software download that will unlock the faster mode and make it into like a performance. So. <laughs> Just downloading a software update will make your car faster. That's, you know, that's not that cool. That's not that cool. It's, it's not as cool as a race culture where you could get a different car and you just, you know, spend thousands and thousands of dollars to soup it up and you feel that pride. Like, hey, this is my toy. Look what I did to it. Take a look at this competitions and, and so on. So Tesla really doesn't belong in that kind of world. You could buy a bunch of accessories. You know, that's about it to make it look nice. But it's it has this modern, futuristic kind of culture about it and which I absolutely love. Yeah, if you're really into the uh, racing culture, Tesla is definitely not for you. All right, issue number seven is that it doesn't have Apple CarPlay or Android. So everybody who owns an iPhone loves using the Apple CarPlay. It just seems to work so well with your car and if you've seen the latest apple presentation they made a software upgrade where they have integrated apple carplay thoroughly into the car so not only will it have messages and phone and music the basic stuff that your iphone gives you they have upgraded so big for their apple carplay to work with your car and Tesla doesn't have Apple CarPlay. And of course they shouldn't. Their software is actually really good, very responsive. I actually really love how clean it is. And I'm pretty sure eventually they're gonna have stores, right? Like how iPhone has an app store and you could download games and things like that. Your Tesla Model 3 only has about 11 games right now, but I'm pretty sure they're eventually gonna come out with an app store that you could also download more games and do more things with it. So, but as of now, there's no Apple CarPlay. I actually love the way it works with my iPhone, so I'm not complaining at all, but if you are stuck and absolutely must have Apple CarPlay in your car because you love it, I, I love it too, then this car isn't for you. Our number eight, limited streaming service. This car only has Netflix, Hulu, Disney+, Plus, YouTube, Twitch, TikTok, and that's it. That's good enough for me. I mean, I, I watch Netflix. I got, I like to watch YouTube, Hulu, Disney Plus. That's good enough for me. I'm not really going to stay in this car and watch a bunch of, uh, you know, movies and videos, uh, for a long time. It's really best when you are stuck in a supercharger and then now you got 30 minutes to kill and, and you could quickly watch a short YouTube video or something, right? So you don't really need a lot of streaming services, but maybe you do <laughs> maybe you do maybe you want to go camping with your car and maybe maybe some of you live in a tesla car so one of the websites that i've gone to is a better theater.com and that gives you more options like the hbo max and other streaming services and more games as well 
you could see how desperately I'm trying to find issues, 10 issues with my Tesla Model 3 and I am struggling because this car is almost perfect. I absolutely love it. So please know that this is my favorite car, but I'm still trying to give 10 problems with this car. Problem number nine, having to pay for internet for your car. I know that's kind of silly, right? It's only $10. So you, so when you buy Tesla Model 3, they give you one year of free internet with your car, right? You need internet for your Tesla Model 3 if you want your app to work, if you want to use the map and you know, all the internet services uh, that you have in this car, right? It works so perfectly. The Century, how you could watch the security camera from at home or from office or anywhere else where you could turn on the security camera and look with your phone if something was to go down with your car right so there's all these cool features that and of course a software update right you could use that too so it's very useful to have it and i know that once i run out of my one year subscription i'm going to pay the ten dollars a month but you know that there's a lot of people that don't want to pay the ten dollars a month right because we're already paying for you know hulu netflix and disney plus and we have so much other subscriptions that we're paying extra ten dollars a month even though it's really not that much it, some people are, will think twice about it i me growing up you know cheap in my life having been cheap and broke most of my life i have that habit of you know thinking about where i'm gonna spend ten dollars it, it doesn't matter that I've, you know, I've grown to become an adult and I'm actually doing pretty okay for my business. And it doesn't matter how much I make. I'm always going to be Mr. Cheapskate. So <laughs> that will kind of bug you. I know it's going to bug me. But at the same time, I said it many times before, if it's to support Elon Musk with his mission to make this world a better place, then, hey, man, I'm in. Problem number 10 I know I made a video before about how affordable this car is, and it really is affordable for my situation, but Teslas are very expensive, right? So right now, uh, with incentives, all the other EV cars out there right now, like the Ionic and, and the EV6 and you know a bunch of other EVs that's coming out right now, they are way more affordable than the cheapest Tesla Model 3. Tesla Model 3 standard is the cheapest, of course, and that's $10,000. And I think you could get it for like after taxes, $50,000 or something like that. It's it's still up there after taxes and everything. It's It just bumps up like crazy, right? So, you know, with this car out the gate out after taxes, it was $60,000. I am paying $750 a month for it. So it is not a cheap car. Most of my cars in the past have been just 250 bucks 200 bucks a month of course those cars were like fifteen thousand dollar cars or cheap cars and that's what i'm used to but you know it, if you don't make enough money if you don't if you can't spare 750 dollars extra per month then this car is out of your reach so they are doing their best to make a twenty five thousand dollar car god knows when that's going to come out probably not for a long time but the great thing about it is that other ev companies are already coming up with affordable cars the incentives are great like in california if you were to buy an ev6 for example i think you get maybe seven thousand dollars back from the government and there's other incentives uh, for buying that car so it becomes even cheaper like for example chevy bolt after incentives after getting some money back from the government you could get an ev car from chevrolet for only twenty six thousand dollars plus tax and so on but it's way cheaper than sixty thousand dollars but still even at that price people are willing to spend that extra money to get a tesla model 3 because teslas are still top of the uh, food chain it's still the very best ev car out there it's the most popular car out there and to me it's the best looking car so that is my 10 reasons of why you might not want a tesla model 3 those are very weak reasons i know uh, i try my best to find something that you know i could complain about but I personally, it's not even something I really want to complain about. I don't care about those things, to be honest with you. I absolutely love my Tesla Model 3. And if you got to make small sacrifices for something that you actually enjoy, then that's what you have to do in life. That's life. You got to make sacrifices. Nothing is free. Nothing comes easy. 
everything that you love in life you have to work for it and it's not going to be smooth sailing so that's the trade-off in life right but anyways if you watched it all the way through i thank you so much please hit that like and subscribe button and i will see you next time